Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the final video in this part of the My Images with Core Data series. In this video, we'll see how we can email one of our My Image objects, including both the JSON and images, to another user and see how, upon receipt, the user can quickly have it added to their own application Core Data Store and the image to the app's document directory. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. If you haven't followed along with this series, I recommend that you check out the earlier videos. Links are in the description below, along with completed projects for each video if you're just starting here. If you have been following along, you can continue to use your own project iOS 16 introduced a new Share Links and Share Sheets API, and I've created a full video on this topic. A link is in the description below. The problem with the Share Link, though, is that it is essentially a button with no pre processing allowed. This means that you would have to have your JSON and image zipped up before you even tapped on the Share Link button. In this solution, that's not really ideal because one could be editing and changing things and choose to share before getting a chance to save. Plus, if a user is not going to share the image, I don't want to create a zipped object every time I get to this edit screen, just in case. So what do we do? Well, fortunately, we have a UIKit version of ShareSheet, and we could use a UI View Controller representable to help us out, or a UI Activity View Controller presented over a Root View Controller. I showed this in Episode 8 of the SwiftUI Wordle clone series, though that will be easier now with the new share link because in that case I am only sharing strings. But at that time I created the video that was not available. However, I'm not even going to do that. And the reason is that with share sheets, you are limited in restricting what kind of actions to present to the user upon receipt. And I want to focus on sharing via email so that when they get the attachment, it'll be much easier and more obvious. Plus, I can always add more instructions if I want to the body of the message. This too has some issues with SwiftUI because you cannot form a single email and present an email form with an attachment without involving UIKit and another UI view controller representable. Now we could create this ourselves, but I'm going to provide you with the file that I created that relied on this post from Swift Recipes on how to send email in SwiftUI. I actually use this in my video on adding email support requests to a SwiftUI project. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below as well. Now I've modified that slightly and I provide the file for you as part of the resources downloadable for this series. So I recommend that you download it. I updated the code to use the latest SwiftUI dismiss action code for a modal sheet. So let's get started. First, let's create a new folder grouping and call it mail. Inside that folder grouping, create a new file and call it email form. Inside there, create a new struct called email form and make sure you spell it exactly this way as the file that we'll add shortly depends on this. The properties of this struct will re represent or reflect all of the items that make up an email and we will set default values for each property. We'll need a to address which will be an empty string, a subject as an empty string, a message header that we might want to use as a preface to each message that we send. So we'll start out though with an empty string, assuming none. We'll need data, which will be an optional data type that we include only if we have an attachment. We will, but you may wish to use this email form in the next file we add to some of your existing projects so you won't have an attachment for emails necessarily for all of your apps. If there is an attachment, there will be a file name and we'll set it as an empty string, but it will be changed only if data is not nil. Then we'll set the default mind type for the message body as plain text. Then in the body, it will be a string that will be an empty string if the message header is empty but if not, we can add the message header along with a line feed so that anything the user adds after the fact will be on a separate line. 
From the resources folder that I supplied then, let's drag in that mail view form. Open the file and take a look at it. It is, as I mentioned, a UI view controller representable. It has a binding though to an instance of our email form, so we're going to get all of our information passed into here. It'll be presented modally, so we get that environment key path so that we can dismiss it. The key is the make UI view controller function, and that's where we create the MF mail composer view controller. Here we add the properties of our form to the view controller properties. Notice that the attachment is only added if it's not nil on our mail form instance. We also have a static property that we can access that will let us know if the device we are on can even send an email. So we will have to test this on a real device and not the simulator. And when we create this instance, we'll be providing a callback function that is an MF mail compose result once the email is sent and the form is dismissed. To implement this, open the image form view. Create a new Boolean state property that will allow us to present the form, so call it send mail, and assign it the default value of false. Then create another state property called email that will be an instance of our new email form. And remember, all the properties have default values. In the alerts OK action, remove the dismiss action. And within the if clause, after the save my image function has been called and we have our zip file already in our documents directory, we can assign the properties to our new email form variable. To the email's message header, we'll create a string sent from the my images CD app. The file name will be the concatenation of the string interpolated ID and a period followed by the share service class's static extension property. The MIME type, though, is going to have to reflect the fact that we've got a zip archive, so it will be application slash zip. Now the attachment itself will be the file located in the documents directory and will append the email's file name. We then see if we can fetch the data from the contents that item using an optional try and if it exists we set the email data to that value. Then we check to see if our device can actually send an email and toggle the send mail property. If our device can't send email, we'll just print to the console because we're likely on a simulator and we'll dismiss this update form completely. Once the email has been sent, we can remove the file, the zip file from the documents directory, which is actually the attachment URL, because why keep it around if we have sent the email? So we'll use a try to use the file manager's remove item at that URL. When send mail is toggled, we'll present a sheet using that mail form. This will provide us with a result that is either a success or a failure, so we can switch on that. In the case of success, we don't have to really do anything, but I'll print to the console email sent. In the case of an error, we'll get that error so we can print the localized description. Now, there's one thing I forgot about though. If the user is in the process of editing, and chooses to send, our form gets dismissed, but our image hasn't been updated or saved within our application. So go back to the updating button and cut out the code within the view models updating if clause. 
At the end of the struct, create a new function and call it update image. Paste that block of code in there. Now we can reuse this code. So back where we cut out the code, we can call the function. And then we can do that again just before we toggle the share button so that our image will be saved before we send off the email. And finally, once the message has been sent with our share sheet and we get a result back, we can dismiss the update view and get back to our grid view. Now I've installed this code now on two different iPhones. The one on the left is my iPhone with all of my images loaded. And the one on the right is my wife's iPhone. And you can see she hasn't any images added. So on my phone, I'm going to select one of the images and initiate a share. I'm asked to provide my name, which I'll enter here. And then when I tap on OK, the mail form is presented in my mail client with the attachment already added. And I can see that message header here already. Let me address the email to my wife. I'll add a message subject. And then I'm going to send the message. So let me switch over to my wife's iPhone now. I'm going to open her mail client, and indeed I see she's received an email from me. When I open it, notice that the attachment has our custom dock icon. This means that our UTI is working, and by installing the app on this phone, it'll recognize all attachments that have the MYIMG extension. If I tap on the attachment, I'm presented with this new sheet asking me to select something to open it in. And I see that my application is front and center here. When I tap on it, the application opens and my image gets added to it. If I open it, I see the JSON data has been added along with who the originator is and it's not editable. Well, let me go back to my phone now and change the image to one that I stylized by drawing the image on my iPad. I'm kind of proud of this, actually. I think it looks pretty cool. Let me update the comment, too. I think my wife would appreciate this version more. So I'm going to send it to her. So let me go through that same process again, where I have to add my name and send it to my wife. Well, let me check the, her email once more. Well, there it is. So let me tap on it once more and choose the My Image app. Well, the app opens and I'm told that the image has been updated. And you can see that indeed it has. It's not a new entry. It's an update to an existing entry because the IDs were the same. Well, that basically completes the section of this series. I found this technique to be extremely useful for me, and, and that's what resulted actually in this video. I'm currently in the process of rewriting an app that I have on the App Store called My Wine Cellar, and it's an iPhone and iPad app. You can see it here, and it was written in UIKit several years ago, and it uses Realm as the backend data persistence. I've got lots of users, and they can have a lot of entries with many images associated as wine labels for each bottle. It's not a simple data structure, so there are many models and they are nested within each other. But I know that I can create a JSON representation of that structure when I save it and reverse the process on receipt. Now I'm designing this app now in SwiftUI and Core Data. And the app though will have a different bundle ID. So I want to give my users the ability to migrate from one version to the other. So I'm going to provide an option on the original apps screen to create an archive of the existing data and initiate an email. So this creates that nested JSON object of all of my data and zips it up with all of the labels and then creates an email with it as an attachment. 
The header this time is a little more detailed, but users can then send it to anyone else who has an app that will accept documents with that same UTI MWCBU this time. Well, guess what? My new app does. So I'm going to send it to my wife who has the app installed and you can see it has no entries. She can open her email and tap on the attachment. This time, the new My Wine Cellar Plus application is the one that is front and center. When she taps on it, all wine entries, including logs, wineries, vintages, varieties, etc., are all added along with their relationships, along with each one of their labels, and the migration is complete. This is a useful feature then if you want to provide a means of backing up and restoring different snapshots of your data. So I hope that you found this series helpful and find that you might be able to use this in one of your projects someday. If you like this video and the series, please leave a comment below and give the video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel to get notifications of every new video I release. I may be adding to this project in the future as I explore CloudKit options with Core Data. Thanks for watching.